the place where real dialogue matters. It is time to take flight with Audio Airstrike. This is Audio Airstrike. I'm your host, Everett Hall McNeil. Thank you for joining us. We got a special topic to cover, but I didn't want to cover this alone. With me is a familiar face. He was on the podcast a couple of episodes ago. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Mason Pastro. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited to be back on here. Honestly, this was a lot of fun last time. So I'm excited to get into this, especially the topic we're talking about, man. It's it's going to be spicy for sure. Yeah, it definitely is. And, and I want to get right into it. Um, we have found out that hip hop rapper Juice World passed away. Um, he had seizures um, at a local Chicago airport. And um, very sad. He was only 21 years old. And it's very. It's it's weird for me to say this, but we've seen this play out so many different times and in so many different facets Mm. amongst this generation of people. And I think they're only like a couple. I think they're only what a year younger than you, two years younger than you. Tom. Yeah, yeah. I'm 22. Yeah, Juice just turned 21. So sad, man. His birthday was on like the the sixth. I want to say no. I think it was like the fourth. Maybe I don't know. It was literally like a couple days before his before he passed his birthday. He turned 21. Yeah. yeah, he just turned 21. Had a successful career, but. What 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 mind boggles me is is that, and I just want to kind of get down to this. First off, I want to say respectfully, uh, rest in peace to Juice World. Mm. Uh, thoughts and prayers with the family and friends that were close with him. But there is something that troubles me with this current generation of entertainers, rappers, whatever fancy name you want to give them, and that is these people are dying too soon. And if you listen to some of the music. When I was coming up and listening to hip hop, never did I think that, you know, when when Green Day was in the height of its, you know, popularity, when uh, Good Charlotte when this is in the, uh, the height of their popularity, when Lincoln Park was in the height of their popularity before mm. they before they all became legacy acts that we know. Um, I never thought that the the sad emo type of style that they brought to the table would mesh into hip hop until years later. And Mm. since that has happened, I've heard in songs, people talking about death a lot. XX Tacion being one of them, Juice World being one of them. And there's a couple of other people that I'm, that I know that I've heard around the block talk about Mm -hmm. these things. Mac Miller too, man. Mac Miller as well. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. So, The, the the what bothers me is is it's it's the combination of that and you know musically it works sonically it works if we're talking on music ear it works but if we're talking about content wise it worries me because people are speaking these things into their lives and also dabbling in drugs mhm like, uh, and I'm not trying to dirty this kid's name at all, but I'm just trying to be honest with the people. Like, this this guy was dabbling with codeine. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Heavily. Heavily. Like, they, and apparently, you know. And Percocets and right. all of that stuff, man. Right. And the family was well aware that he was struggling with those things. Mm-hmm. At what point do we sit back and go, all right, these kids are talking about death. They're getting into the emo bag and I'm concerned as a fan and also as a consumer because I'm not too worried about the turn up. If months, years later, I'm going to hear about this person's death. Um, Yeah. It's one of these situations where I'm looking at this situation and going. Like who is behind these kids and telling them, yo, slow down. This is not stay away from that. Don't do this. Um, Mm. Or do they even take the word to listen? So I'm at a loss because I'm looking at this situation and I'm thinking to myself, like, how many more 21 year olds 
got to leave this world mixing drugs and talking about death a lot and cutting off the legacy they're trying to leave because everybody is, whether good or bad, you're going to leave a legacy. It's just mm-hmm. the bottom line. Yeah, definitely. So, it's sad. Yeah. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, okay, XX Tacion gone, Juice World gone, Mac Miller gone. Yeah, Lil Peep. Lil Peep gone. Nipsey um, Hustle. Like, Nipsey dude. Hustle gone. So Man. that's a lot of talented individuals between the age of 20 to 33 to 30 something years old that are just gone. And I'm, I don't know what's it going to take. Like, if it's not natural weed. Mm hmm. I don't think anybody should be touching these other things. Yeah, it's just so glorified, man. That's the thing. I, I was watching a Juice World interview um, the other day. And yeah, rest in peace to that, man. I loved his music, by the way. But I was watching an interview with him, and he's talking about how when he was in like fifth or sixth grade, he's listening to songs by Future, glorifying like Lean and Codeine, same thing. And um, he was like wanting to drink Codeine when he was like in fifth or sixth grade, when he was impressionable. So that was reflected in his music when he got older he probably like wanted to try it maybe to seem cool or maybe thought it was part of being a rapper and then like thinking maybe oh, i'll just try it once it's fun but that shit's so addictive man you don't you don't like you can't just like fuck around and be like oh, let me try like once or twice it's so addictive especially if you have emotional pain like i know this from personal experience because i pretty much had an opiate addiction like it numbs your emotional pain man and just like all it takes is like that one one or two times getting high and you're just like holy shit this is the best relief ever and then it just spirals out of control so it's just sad dude it's sad it didn't the, the whole death everything really didn't hit me until like two days ago man like my friend called me i remember he's like dude Ju- juice world just died and this is like one of my best friends we always listen to juice world together he's like juice world just died and it's this is why it's the I, I would say this is why it's the most sad is because like I wasn't even shocked, dude, from how many of these rappers have died recently. I wasn't even shocked. I was like, damn. And it took me a few days to actually process it. And I was I went back and listened to some of his music that really helped me through like breakups and hard times. And like, dude, I just shed a few tears. I was like, damn, like this man is I'm never going to be able to listen to any of his new music like ever. Like he's he's gone off the face of the earth. And it, it's. It's just like, dude, when will America wake up? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a huge opiate problem. There's a huge drug problem. Prescription pills are, like, fucking ruining people's lives, destroying families' lives. And I think we're slowly finally, like, catching on to it now that celebrities are dying. But, like, it's not just Juice World, dude. Like, people are dying all over across America because of this shit. So it's just like a wake-up call for all of us, really. It, so I'm I'm gonna challenge this point. Is it a wake up call? Because if Future comes out with a song two weeks from now talking about the same thing, then it's yeah. not gonna be that wake up call. Now I'm gonna be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not solely blaming Future for what is going on, but he is a part of it. Make mm-hmm. no mistake about it. He is a part of it. Oh yeah. Um, at, at what point? Is the bag worth it to turn around and promote this drug that is killing young people at an alarming rate? Like, what is the point? The pop pills and perks and this and that, um, I don't agree with it. It's something that is ravaging communities and it does and i'm not talking about just inner city communities i'm talking about the little suburbia towns that look nice on the outside but you go in somebody's house you really see what's Mm -hmm. up Um, yeah and it's ravaging everybody no matter race class or whatnot so Mm -hmm. at what point and what steps are we finally gonna take to take a step back and be like okay we're losing people that are barely turning 21 like this is becoming a lot and I'm looking at the music and I see his music and other people's music that of all the names we just mentioned. And some of those songs are a cry for help. I was just saying the exact same thing, man. They really are a cry for help. It's sad, dude. You listen, you listen back to some, like some of the songs is like, especially the one he made after X died and he made it about peep and X. 
He's like, all legends fall in the making. And he said, and he says, what's the 27 club? We're not making it past 21. And he literally died after he turned 21. And oh my God, man. And I, I, per your point, dude, it's like, at what point is the money worth it, right? Because it's the, the music industry seems kind of fucked. Like, I don't know much about it because I've never like had my hands in the actual industry. I just, I'm just a consumer, right? But it seems to me that what really sells, of course, is like talking about partying and drugs and women and money and all of that shit because it sells, right? And then you throw in the mix of like sad emotion, like wanting to die in there. It's like now you have shit that sells, but it's also like promoting like being depressed. And it's like almost come like kind of become like a trend to just be like depressed. It's so strange. What, what's sick about it is, is that mental health has become a big topic now and you have this industry depending on which artists exploiting mental health in songs that maybe are not dealing with mental health as much as an actual person Mm -hmm. that deals with mental health heavier and i'm not trying to say which flaw is more greater i'm just saying that we have people out here that behind closed doors wearing suits and ties exploiting mental health addiction and stuff and whatnot and then making this person that is talented the face of those things the face tats the colorful clothes the you know the grimy behavior times the antics i'm just i'm just generalizing what we've seen over the past five or so years Mm -hmm. this is what we have seen And the second that that person gets in trouble or the second that that person has to answer for his problems, now nobody wants to be the big bro anymore. Nobody wants to be that uh, person that says, yo, you shouldn't be doing that. Now now that person is surrounded by a bunch of yes men and there's Mm -hmm. no integrity or accountability, which is why I will never trust the music industry to be the standard for what integrity is, to be the standard as to what, um, to have honesty and truth. There is always some underhanded thing to make money. And unless that artist is doing something independent and on his own, where he is in control of every facet of his licensing, his publishing, the streams and stuff of that nature, unless he is doing that format independently, and not being helped by a company at all, there is always going to be some type of dirt underneath it all at some point or one or another. And going back to this, the homeboy was signed to Interscope. You telling me not one single person in Interscope looked at this and was like, yo, we need to slow him down. Like, he shouldn't be doing this. Like, you telling me one person didn't stand back and was like, look, Bro, you are you just turned 21, you just turned 20, you just turned 19. You got a good song out and it works. But I yeah. think that you're rolling too fast in terms of the drug use, in terms of the partying, like yo, you taking yourself out, you're going the same damn road that everybody else is going down. Let's mm-hmm. try to figure out a way. You can still you can be yourself. Nobody's saying you gotta switch up and be somebody you're not. But we're trying to make sure that you have longevity in your career. And that's the problem. These companies, these people that they bring themselves around because they want to, quote unquote, make it. Mm -hmm. They are willing to sacrifice their own self-destruction for the fame. And I'm not saying Juice World does that. I'm speaking generally about how this music industry is. We have seen way too many musicians die, especially when it involves emo rap or rap period. Mm-hmm. where we've seen those similar situations. Nipsey was very the most independent out of all of them, and that was a different thing because of jealousy and whatnot, which I ain't going to go into that now because that's not the topic. Mm-hmm. When it comes to Juice World, you're telling me that nobody, nobody in Interscope said, hey, let me pull you to the side and help you try to navigate this better. I don't understand that, man, honestly. <laughs> like dude juice for me his i love the way that he was starting to bridge like i don't know man you got Lil peep who i loved his music but it was sad because i didn't start listening to peep until after he passed so i felt kind of guilty about that right 
But then X, I absolutely loved X. People call, I don't know how you feel about this. How do you feel about like people calling X the Tupac of our generation? That was like a bold claim I heard. But I also shed some tears when X died, man. And he died on my 21st birthday. But mm. I'm curious how you feel about that. People saying that X was the Tupac of our generation. Because like he was killed in like a hit and run, similar to, I guess, how Pac died. But I'll, I'll say this. Um, I feel like people... So how old was X when he passed? I want to say he was 20. I so he was just turned 20. To the 19 year old now, mm-hmm. in their head at 19, I could understand why they would say that. Yeah. To a 29 year old me, mm-hmm. that is coming from a slightly different generation. I would call it a, a reach. Like my impulse would be, okay, that's a reach. You wasn't around when Tupac was living. You don't know the impact. You're 19. Mm-hmm. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like that is my instinct. Mm-hmm. You know, I was six years old when Tupac passed. So mm. even my perspective is limited. You would have to right. go even older than me. Mm. Somebody who was a teenager or somebody who's in their 20s when Tupac passed. So when how I feel about them saying that, I don't have a problem with that because they're 19. So to them, the music that they're listening to is a different catalog than the music that I'm listening to. And there are some things that I'm not going to rock with that they would rock with. So I don't have a a problem with it. I think, I think the reason that comparison was made is not just because like he was killed in like a hit and run type scenario, but X in his music and especially on social media was just, on some different shit, man. I don't know how to explain it, but he understood something that most music, like he wasn't just in it for like the money or the fame or anything. Like, at least from my understanding, I don't know much about X's whole story, but I, I'm from my understanding, he came out of prison and was like blowing up while he was in prison. That song, Look at Me, was blowing up while he was in prison. And he came out and just like the album 17, dude, was just experimental, fucking amazing. And like him sharing his raw feelings and going on social media and explaining to like his listeners and his fans and saying like guys i made this because like i'm just being true to myself i'm not i don't care what's gonna fucking sell or anything and what's funny is it didn't uh, did end up selling so x is interesting because he didn't glorify at least from my perspective he didn't glorify drugs as much as juice did but both of them glorified kind of death and like depression and like that angst that really spoke to the younger generation i feel like definitely spoke to me but like x at least x he was like creating a movement man he was creating a movement and then he was just boom wiped out juice i don't know like i kind of put them in different buckets in my mind like they both like kind of spoke about similar topics but like juice was more kind of like okay i'm sad and i'm like using drugs to like cope with that x to me was like I'm sad, but like I'm speaking to the generation to let them know that they're not alone in, in the shit that they're going through. Juice was kind of just speaking more about his personal struggle. Je- X was like his personal struggle and then like relating it back to the audience. So you felt like it was more of a movement with X where Juice World was just kind of, it was kind of like I'm explaining to you what I'm going through to get it out. Yeah, man. And if I'm being honest, I mean, I didn't listen to Juice's latest album as much as i listened to goodbye and good riddance his his first mixtape he dropped which i absolutely love like every single track on there is just amazing but yeah i mean f- from from my personal perspective how i feel is like you can even see this in the screenshot of the song um legends that juice juice made right the album artwork is actually a conversation with him in x and this is so interesting because you can see it's like an instagram dm conversation and Juice is like giving him some praise or whatever. And X says to him, he says, keep doing you, bro. Just be careful what you manifest. Like X knew something that Juice didn't. X knew something about his power, like something. He was tapped into something, dude. There's a bunch of like conspiracies about the Illuminati and shit. I don't want to get into that. But like X knew something and was pretty much telling Juice like, hey, dude, I see you're on the same wave as me. You're gaining traction. Like you're like your voice is being heard. You're getting power. Like you're speaking to kids. Just be careful what you manifest. And obviously, he ended up like, fuck, he literally manifested, like, if you listen to Juice's music, dude, he literally manifested his own death. 
And X like knew that X knew that shit was coming. So I just think that's so interesting. It's like X was just tapped into something. I don't know if it was like spiritual or like he just felt something different, but that's just how I feel. Like when I, when I think about X and think about his legacy versus juice, like, I feel like it's, it's weird. Cause X is like younger than juice technically, but X like saw something almost like he was like the older brother leading him, like saying, brother, listen to me. You gotta be careful what you manifest. Like this shit's powerful and you gotta be careful. And yeah, it's true. It's, mm-hmm. it's definitely true because if, if, if all you talk about is life and going after it and, Yes, you were depressed, but you can get past it and achieve greatness. Like if that was the message, it would help out so many kids. Because when you're 19, 18, 21, 22, you are still trying to figure out who you are. You're still trying to figure out like the I'm talking about the average person that's that age group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have the confidence that somebody that would be 35, 30, them been through some stuff, but they got their confidence, or somebody their late 20s. Depending on who it might be. Mm -hmm. The average 19, 20, 21 year old is still searching for their identity. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're searching for their identity. And they're searching for where do I belong? Where do I fit in? What's my calling? When you have that happen, you have to be careful as to what message you put out there. Because they are in, in... and I know that we say that everybody is impressionable when they're a kid. Mm-hmm. I say that you're even more impressionable when you become a teenager. Oh, yeah. Because now you're experimenting more. When you're younger than a teenager, you're just following orders. Because you ain't mm-hmm. trying to get in trouble. Yep. When you're like 13, 14, 15, you feel your parents are like, all right, you're slightly older to the point there's certain stuff I can't tell you. You're just going to have to experience it. And so you're kind of now in the experimentation phase. Yeah, you are going to turn around and, you know, be like, all right, let me try to figure out. I have all these questions. Where do I belong? Where do I go from here? And anybody can influence you at that point. So X being aware of what his influence was Mm -hmm. and knowing that his influence would spawn more of this sound that would inspire the juice worlds and little peeps and other people that were coming around him and stuff of that nature. He was well aware. If you're talking about death, you're going to manifest this crap and you know, Mm -hmm. you're, you're manifesting evil presences to come around you potentially. Yeah. If you were talking about death heavy like that Mm -hmm. and you're running the risk of like, you're speaking to a mass audience. You're not in the room with them with your arm around them. So you have to also take into account, and this is what's dangerous, not everybody takes the same message the same. If a pastor gets on the pulpit tomorrow and says a sermon, it's going to hit about the 100 to 200 people that are in the audience. It's going to hit everybody differently because mm-hmm. everybody's in a different phase in their life. So that is one of the dangers. So for him to tell Juice World in a DM, be careful what you manifest. I think he turned around and knew all of these nuances, these possibilities that would happen, which yeah. is crazy. He was tapped because, into something, dude. Because he was tapped into something. My thing is, I just hope he was tapped into the right thing and not the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Like, I don't know if, if he was really religious like that. I don't know. I didn't dig into his personal life heavy. However, whatever he was tapped into, they gave him the foresight to say that DM. Whatever he was tapped into, to give him the foresight to to spread a message like, hey, I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this to actually help people. For him to do all of these things, I just hoped he was tapping to the correct thing and not the wrong thing. Yeah, dude, it's interesting because from my understanding, like, it's funny because he, he grew up in Florida, I think. I think I don't know much about his his life, like a similar to you. But from my understanding, like he was kind of a tortured soul growing up, like abused and ended up therefore being abusive towards his girlfriend and like angry and like hurt. And I think he wanted to be a voice for kids that were similar to the shit that he was going through growing up. But oh man, it's dude, just thinking about it. Like, X's passing was so unexpected. I think, like, X, 
it's it's kind of different but similar in the same way but x was like shot and killed right he wasn't trying to die juice was almost like asking for it you know what i mean like juice is the one at the end of the day he's the one who put the perkies or however he died and ended up having the seizure he's the one who did that to himself you know what i mean x was just like shot cold blood like murdered so it's it's almost like in a, there's like so many weird conspiracy theories and shit but it's almost like someone it's it's almost like I feel like anytime someone gets assassinated, that person who gets assassinated is getting assassinated because someone doesn't like the message they're, they're spreading or someone knows how powerful that person is, right? Like if you look at JFK or anyone who's assassinated, man, it's like right before they're getting assassinated, they're starting to gain a shit ton of traction. They're starting to change like the world, like literally the world, like one, one state country at a time, they're starting to like create that movement. And then someone comes in and says like, you know what? Fuck that shit. Like we got to put an end to this. So that's why I feel like that's why I just feel like there's just something different that X was tapped into that someone saw. They're like, we got to put an end to this kid because he's like, he's starting to create waves, right? But with Juice, it's just different, man. With Juice, he's just like wished it upon himself. Like, damn, it's sad to see where both of them could have gone if they were still here. It, it's sad to see, but it, I mean, it's one of those things where it's it's very troublesome to me. Um because it's so much potential gone and snuffed out in a matter of seconds. And by the time, and the sad thing about it is, by the time everybody realizes your potential, by the time everybody realizes what legacy you left, it's too late. And there's a sense of loss because the people that really supported you never got a chance, never got the chance to meet you, greet you, Say, you know, um, you know, open up to you about the stuff that they that you help them with. Like there's a lot of opportunities that are lost. There's a lot of connections that are lost. There's a lot of people that could have used those kind words, could have used that lyric, could have used that song to get them out of something. But now they got to turn to a different alternative. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like there's a yeah. lot of lost opportunities and a lot of lost potential. And the sad thing about it is. Is the people that turned around the manipulators get quiet because they realize I had a hand in this kid's destruction. So let me stay quiet and not say nothing. Now's not a good time for me to say nothing. And what I mean by manipulators, I mean the people that were sitting there letting him do it. Yeah. Not pulling him aside and being like, hey, man, watch out for this. Do this. Don't do that. This is what pisses me off because I'm like, who, who is going to be that person that stands up and says, yo, you shouldn't be doing this. But at the same time, and this is where I challenge the younger generation, I'm not, I'm not picking on them because this ain't the generation to be picking on people. Not with all this mental health talk going on. I'm not doing that. But we, I think when it comes to older generations, we need to figure out how to speak to the younger generation and just try to figure out their language. Cause every, every generation speaks a different language in my, mm -hmm. and that's just me. Yeah. I, th I, I feel think, that. I, I think every generation speaks a different language. Like my generation may be speaking a language that is similar, but, slightly different than yours mm. if that makes sense yeah I we're, feel the that. we're the 90s kids mm -hmm. you're like late 90s. Say, late 90s kids. so yeah. yeah so it's like it's similar because the because the because the age gap ain't really that much mm -hmm. but it's slightly different mm -hmm. so for sure if if there's a way that we could really come together have an open forum not like not be quick to bash the younger generation but just be like all right you talk i just want to see how you're feeling talk floor is yours i ain't gonna interrupt you i ain't gonna talk down to you you tell me exactly how you're feeling if we gave more of those opportunities they would be more receptive to us saying you shouldn't do that and here's why but if I beat you down with you a lost generation, you don't listen, you full of shit, 
Mm-hmm. You you know you, you you're sitting over here. You're not doing what I tell you to do. You don't understand. You're too young. Well, how is that helping them? Yeah, it's not going to man. <laughs> All they're gonna want to do is like, well, you just basically said I'm nothing. Their language is you basically said I'm nothing. So why would mm-hmm. I even listen to your correction? There's a difference with that. Then hey, I'm gonna let you when you got a problem. I'm gonna let you talk. And then we're going to figure it out together. Who do you think they're going to be more receptive to? The person that is letting them have a voice. So if their parents are not letting them have a voice in the home or they're abusive to the point where their childhood is stripped away, similar to X's uh, background, Mm -hmm. where do you think they're going to go to get the influence? It ain't going to be the parents and it ain't going to be in anybody who is an image of their parents. I'm talking, I'm not just talking about where they come from. I'm talking about the age group as well. If they're a certain age group, they ain't listening to you. You want to know why? Because that age group reminds them of their parents that weren't there for them. So they ain't going to listen. Guess who they're going to listen to? The age group that looked out for them. Or that is looking out for them in their own way. Mm, Yeah. In a language they understand. So that's kind of like like psychologically and and socially we got to we got to get to that point where we understand that not everybody is going to speak the exact same language you're different with, you're dealing with a, a different generation. My generation we didn't we didn't grow up with touch screens and iPads. We saw it's weird because we didn't grow up with it. But as we got older, we saw it immersed into society. Now mm-hmm. we got a generation and then, you know, you kind of you kind of came in at the tail end of that. And then the generation yeah. behind you grew up in grew up full blown it, social media era. So that's three different mm-hmm. languages. Yeah. You know, we look like the old heads if we pull out a VHS tape. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I still remember VHS, too. But yeah. that was I, that was only for like a few years, right? And then it was straight to like CDs and DVDs and shit. Yeah, and then me. and now we're at and now we're in a position where if you got a DVD, they're looking at you nuts. So yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's all those different languages can help each other out. Oh because yeah, because all of those different languages are struggling with mental health. All of them. Yeah, man, I think social media just, like, accelerated the fuck out of everything, right? Because, like, mental health has always been a thing, but I think social media and musicians and, like, it just kind of created its – it's kind of created its own culture almost, and that's, like, accelerated. Well, I'm, like, glad that people feel more open and, like, they can talk about it, but it's, like, almost kind of, like, almost speaking to the younger kids saying, like, you should be sad. I'm just saying from personal experience how I felt listening to Juice's music. I'd actually stop listening to his music. Like I love his music, but if I would like, for example, if I was having a good day and I put on a Juice track right now, it probably started to get me in my feelings. Probably started to get me like thinking about my ex girl and shit. And like, and I, I did. I've dealt with most of that. I don't want to like. I want to listen to shit that's going to put me in a good mood. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, because what you realize is is that. Songs that are recorded and released. The artist was in. That's a time capsule where that artist was at that time. Yeah. That everybody can sympathize with. So if. If you catch that at the wrong time, it could put you at the wrong mindset at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. To the point it could spark a depression to the point it could spark this. So you having to, you know, not listen to Juice World anymore, it makes sense because they were like, there were some songs, I played a song on SoundCloud to really get down to the nitty gritty of what his music was. Mm -hmm. By the time I got to one track where he was talking about smoke with me, pop pills with me, this and that, like partake in what I'm doing to destroy myself, I couldn't listen to it. Yeah. Because... Well, because you know the difference too, yeah. right? Like you know, like how a certain music makes you feel. But I'm talking about like let's say like a kid in seventh grade, right? And and like let's say they they just listen to what's like mainstream. And if like Lucid they, Dreams was a mainstream song, they're like, oh, 
well, this is how I find an artist because they don't really know the difference of like how music makes them feel like energetically and that shit, which you get right. to like understand as you get older. So they're just like, oh, let me just listen to this over and over again. And then they start to like idolize that dude almost. Like I remember for me personally, I almost kind of like idolized being a sad boy. I was like, yeah, this is me. I identify with this. This is me. Until I started going through sobriety and like cleaning my life up and shit, I didn't identify with as much anymore and I stopped listening to his music. But like for someone, that's because like I'm older and started thinking for myself, right? But like younger kids, they don't really know the difference, man. So it's like, it's it if the beat, them. yeah. If the beat drops, it's a nice beat. I'm listening to it. I'm dancing to it. I was 17. I was 17, 18 too at one point. That's all I cared about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But it ain't until you get older, you you hearing it. It's like, wait a minute, these lyrics saying what? Oh yeah. hell no, we can't be having this up in here. Like, yeah. Like you start acting like your parents. Like I remember one time. I remember one time for the longest time, and and this is a rarity, but I was 17. All I brought, it wasn't until I was like in my 20s, that's when I started listening to unedited music. But I would mm-hmm. buy music, and I would only buy the clean version of that music. Mm. To the point we were at a cookout. And they were at, they were talking about music, and they were like, "Oh, well, you're young. We assume you just go and look, look at, listen to the dirty version of every song that's out." I said, "No, I buy, the, I buy the clean version." All the parents turned around and looked at me like, "Is this kid from Earth?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> because they're so used to kids listening to like just anything. So yeah. you know what I mean. So it's it's one of those situations where. Because I was doing that, I was able to decipher early on as a kid. I'd be like, "Okay." These lyrics are wild. I'm changing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. But not everybody was given that. Not everybody was taught that. So mm. if you're younger, you know, the average young person is more impressionable. So he don't, you know, he can't decipher. If somebody's oh, not there man. telling him, if somebody's not there coaching him. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, dude. It's, oh, man. Rest in peace to the kid, but. I guess we'll just see what happens. Like, dude, honestly, the thing is, I, as per your note at the beginning of the conversation, like, I feel like it's almost like similar. This is kind of a bad comparison, but it's, it's almost like the school shooting shit that's going on in the U.S. Like, it's probably just going to keep getting worse until someone finally fucking says, like, okay, let's let's actually be proactive about this shit and stop this. And like actually talk to our artists and like whoever's managing them or whatever and like stop this shit because it's because now because that's that's why it's fucked up because when my buddy my buddy called me and said yo juice died I wasn't surprised just how like if we wake up tomorrow and there's another school shooting you're like not surprised it's fucked up how that's becoming a normal thing you, you get what I'm saying de- you become desensitized to it yeah it's, scary. it's it's fucked man it's fucked I think I think what needs to happen is I think there needs to be. There needs to be a union. There needs to be a call to action amongst every executive in the mu- music industry. Uh, I'm not talking about something just for sh- show. I'm talking mm-hmm. about a sincere movement where you have people that will sit there and be like, okay, we're the executive of these record companies. We have lost too many lives to drug use, depression, and this and that. We are taking the stand and we want to open up programs within our department within our music company we want to talk with uh organizations that you know talk about mental health talk about addiction and we want to be partnered with these organizations to help artists grow but also move in a more uh better lifestyle something that you mm-hmm. know isn't going to cut their life or career short i would like to see that i would love to see that i think it's needed do i think that Every big wig that is in that record companies and record labels are going to make that move. No, probably not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, probably not. And that's the sad. And that's the sad truth about it. It would take. It would take. I think it's going to take the artist first. More so than the label that they are a part of, or if they're independent, I think the artist would have to, you know get with other artists and make that happen since yeah. they're the ones since they're the face that moves the influence i think it's that that would have to happen. dude i think the fans too also like all honestly all the moving parts if the fans like like stood up and said like yo listen we're not gonna listen to any of this shit until you get your artists some help like seriously 
But the tough part is, is the fans identify with it too. Cause the fans are hurting too. So it's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's like a reflection of how the, ge- like how the younger generation feels right now. That's really it's all damn- it is. Yeah. It's damned if you do and damned if you don't, it's one of those scenarios. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. So it's one of those situations where we're going to have to gradually change this. This ain't going to happen. This change ain't going to happen overnight. It's going to have to gradually change over time. And hopefully we get down to seeing some type of change because I'm tired of looking and seeing some 21 year old. uh, I don't care if it's a rapper. I don't care if it's a rock artist. I don't care if it's a pop artist dying too young, gone too soon. I I, I get sick of saying that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we find a solution. Um, Mason, to, to wrap up here, where can they uh, find your information? Where can they learn more about you and stuff of that uh, nature? Where can they find you at? Yeah, so you guys can search me on Facebook if you want, or you can check out my YouTube channel. It's just Mason Pastro. That's M-A-S-O-N-P-A-S-T-R-O. But I just want to say shout out to you, man. Thanks for having me back on. This is a great topic. I love discussing this. This was a great topic. And yeah, man, just great overall conversation. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, no problem, man. Well, we definitely need to have these conversations. It, it, it matters to both, not only uh, your generation and mine, but to everybody else. So we definitely want to have mm-hmm. these conversations. Well, this has been another edition of Audio Airstrike. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you. Take care. Take care.